Hi everyone, I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today as we continue here on This Is A Day. Father Ted Paholchek is with us and he is the Director of Education of the Ethicists at the National Catholic Bioethics Center in Philadelphia. And he's, you know, we're really thrilled to have you here today because we, we have a lot to talk about and we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, well but thanks Jay, glad to be able to be with you. Well, you've done some great stuff for us in the past and, and sadly, it's, it's sad that we have to sit here today. Let me just say that because there is the HHS mandate that the government is trying to push through that has ramifications that I, I don't believe that all of us understand. Let's start with, with the basics, Father. Tell us about the HHS mandate. What actually is it? Well, it's a mandate that was passed on January 20th by the uh, Health and Human Services. Uh, that basically requires that there be provision to provide coverage for contraception, for direct sterilizations, and for other um, approaches to contraception that actually are known to be abortion-inducing. So what this means is you have to have insurance companies paying for, uh, or, or not only insurance companies, but anybody who provides insurance, any large employer mm -hmm. uh, will have to cover these procedures. Now, these these interventions that cause abortions are a real concern. I mean, uh, all of the issues are, but uh, this in particular, this would be the morning after pill, for example, Plan B, or there's a new drug out there that's called Ella, E-L-L-A. It is another um, morning after pill that can be taken up to five days after unprotected sex and is known to, at least, you know, this described by the FDA as one of the mechanisms of action is that it prevents implantation of human embryos into the uterine wall. So this is causing an abortion, in effect. Mm -hmm. So um, there's concern that there's a, this is a form of compulsion, uh, that's a form of coercion over the church, over people of religious persuasion, requiring them to act against their own consciences and actually to fund the provision of these morally problematic uh, approaches. So I think the, um, the situation is, is pretty grave. Uh, this is a, uh, a direct violation of conscience that is, in a sense, bureaucratically mandated with penalties. So those who don't you know, get on the bandwagon, there are very, very significant penalties per employee that no company could realistically afford. Uh, so it's a great concern that this is um, government intruding into the religious life of the church and directly and plainly violating the First Amendment here, uh, which you know insists on this separation of church and state where the government cannot tell churches how to run their business or you know, which aspect of your particular ministries really are Catholic and which ones really aren't. It's not the government's place to be running that kind of show. Mm -hmm. And yet, here we are today talking about this because that's exactly what the government is trying to do. And it seems to me to be just horrendous that they are telling not just Catholics, but anyone who believes in the dignity of life that, well, that's fine, that's fine and good, but we're going to make you do something that is counter to the fiber of your being. How do we get from freedom of religion to this point. It's an amazing thing because, I mean, we always talk about, oh, don't impose your views on the rest of us. And the whole abortion debate was framed this way. Went on for years and decades. Uh, you know, if you don't want an abortion, or if you think it's wrong, don't have one kind of language. And now everything has been turned mm -hmm. upside down, where because we didn't take strong and principled positions and defend them well in the public square, we find ourselves in this incredible situation where now the other side is saying, we're going to impose it on you. We insisted that you not impose on us, and now, full circle, we're going to impose it on you. We're going to mandate it. We're going to put all kinds of penalties and other requirements. So this is a move uh, towards a, a radical governmental control. Very disturbing, very troubling. Uh, you know, the kind of thing that one would see in, in, in socialist types of, of governmental settings not the proper place uh, at all for you know the government of the United States to be doing something like this a, a strong break with the preceding tradition of, uh, of you know hundreds of years of respect for 
religion. Uh, you know, Cardinal George wrote a, a brilliant editorial on this uh, recently in his Archdiocesan newspaper. And, um, you know, he, he, he really was reacting strongly and saying uh, that we wish that we still had the kinds of protections that we thought we had, mm -hmm. you know, a mere few months ago. But we see how quickly things can change and erode. Mm, and trampling, as you said, on the, the First Amendment of the Constitution. There's great mis misconceptions here. It seems as if the government is framing this as this is just just a contraception issue, but it's much more than that. It is much more. And again, Cardinal George in his editorial, I thought, brought this out so nicely. He said, look, they're trying to divide the Catholic bishops from the faithful here. Uh, and the way they're doing it is they're turning it into just a discussion about reproductive rights, mm -hmm. you know, and contraception and trying to paint this pigeonhole it as kind of a minimal Catholic concern. But he said, look, it's contraception today, true, and it's also abortion-inducing drugs and direct sterilizations, but tomorrow it could be euthanasia, it could be physician-assisted suicide, it could be any of a range of other issues that could be, you know, pushed here for the same purpose of violating religious freedom. So you're using, you know, this other side argument to distract attention from what is a power grab over the issue of true religious freedom and safeguarding that as it is meant to be within our society. And here we are, we're obviously, you're a priest, I'm a Catholic, and yet this is not just about Catholics. I think that's what we need to make clear here is that another argument is, well, it's the Catholics, the Catholics are against this. But a lot of people are just, look at this and say, no, this can't happen. Absolutely, and you know, there have been a lot of uh, responses to the HHS mandate from non-Catholics that have been very helpful, I think. I, I was reading the other day uh, in South Florida, two or three different rabbis had given, mm -hmm. you know, great commentaries on this and said, you know, w we're with the Catholic League on this one. This is very clearly not just an issue about contraception. This is truly about religious liberty, religious freedom, freedom of conscience. And we have to be careful here because there's some significant government intrusions mm -hmm. that are taking place. And, you know, there was a, a letter to the editor that came into the Wall Street Journal uh, a number of weeks ago on this issue. And it said basically this, the woman said, look, I'm a supporter of Planned Parenthood, and I've taught all my kids about birth control, but I am highly offended by the arrogant approach of the government thinking that they can dictate to a religion uh, how they're gonna conduct their affairs. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, that's the truth of the matter here. It's not about some particular, you know, creedal aspect, some little detail of religious teaching, but a much bigger question about religious freedom and safeguarding that. So how do we educate people? What do we do? What is the steps we need to take to stop this? Well, I think one of the problems here is that the Obama administration has, has made a very clever tactical move. What was this move? They came out with a accommodation. 2013. Y yeah, I mean, this was just, well, the accommodation was to uh, basically say that the Catholic Church would not have to directly pay, but it would be foisted mm -hmm. onto the insurance companies who would then have to approach the women who are employed, provide these measures, and so on. It just sort of was a shell game. Right. Uh, it didn't actually, you know, the church still will have to pay for coverage of morally objectionable uh, provisions and procedures. So um, that move by the administration made everybody say, oh, there's been a compromise. Oh, everything is fine. Oh, you know, the battle is over, basically. And it actually did not change the substance of the mandate. What's very interesting is that the mandate language has to be entered into the Federal Register, and it was entered in unchanged form after the accommodation, accommodation mm -hmm. was offered. So no, no change to the substance of the mandate itself. People need to be aware of that. And once they're aware of that, I think they can begin to realize we've got to get activated on this. We have to support some of those measures that are being directed towards uh, repealing this and towards safeguarding the conscience of health care providers, of those who provide insurance uh, and, and others of that type. So we have to stay on top of this. We do. Because no accommodations, there was no compromise. That's and correct. And yet people are saying there was, there never was. And there never was. And the bishops, you know, have been very clear about yeah. this. 
Uh, the USCCB has a, a good section of their website on conscience protection, and I really encourage people to visit that, get a little more informed. You know, on first hearing, it sounds pretty complicated, uh, but it's not. I mean, it is just an issue here of forcing those who have serious moral objections to immoral procedures in medicine to actually fund them directly. It's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable mandate. It uh, is unbelievable. But once people get that core or that nugget objection, then I think we can, you know, take steps that will push this back. Mm, well, Father, thank you for coming and joining us today. I, I'm going to invite you back again because there is a, a lot of different things out there that we need to talk about. Well, I really look forward to it. It's always great to be on your show, Jay. Thank you. Thanks.